we go for a spin and talk about how spin columns can give you a win. Um, that is when you are using one of these spin columns to help purify or clean up DNA or RNA. The basic overview is we're just going to get the DNA or RNA to bind, um, watch everything else, and get the DNA or RNA to unbind, so to elute and come through. So we need to adjust the conditions to make it so that the DNA can find the membrane to bind to um, and actually want to bind to that membrane, and then wash everything else off and then get the DNA to not want to bind to that membrane and to come off in the absence of all that stuff that we washed off. Um, and so here is a basic overview of how it is done. So they make different kinds of these columns like Zymo, Kiagen, they sell a bunch of different types depending on whether it's DNA or RNA you want to isolate as well as the size of the piece that you want to isolate. So if you're doing like a mini prep where you broke open cells you want to isolate this big plasmid. If you're doing a PCR reaction you want to do bigger things, isolate those, um, get rid of the small thing, really small things. Uh, but sometimes you want to purify the really small things and so they have like Oligo kits um, for isolating from, like small things. But what I talk about isolating, what I'm really just talking about is you get the DNA or RNA to stick to this membrane, wash everything else off, and then elute or get off um, your DNA or RNA and clean. So away from whatever else was in your reaction, whatever else was going on. And remember to choose the column uh, that fits with the application that you're using, but the basic of it is all really the same. Um, and so I originally uh, made these posts and graphics and stuff based on a PCR cleanup kit um, where basically you do a PCR reaction um, and then you are trying to get rid of the polymerase, the salts, all of that stuff um, and just isolate that pure DNA that you just copied. Um, but again, similar things with other types of kits, um, some things like the pH might vary a little and that sort of thing. But how do they work? But how it works is that these columns, they have this like uh, silica based me um, membrane. So silica, um, it's basically, it has these OH groups. Um, and when you have an OH group, you should be thinking, oh, that can protonate in, or that can deprotonate and then protonate and then deprotonate and deprotonate or protonate. Um, and whether which state it's in is going to depend on the pH. So pH is a measure of the proton availabilities. The, high, the lower the pH, the higher the concentration of protons and the more acidic the solution. So if you have a really acidic solution, those OH groups of the silica are going to be in their OH form. Uh, they're going to be in this conjugate acid form. But at a higher pH, they're going to be in their conjugate base form, so they will have deprotonated. When they're deprotonated, they're negatively charged. DNA is also negatively charged thanks to its phosphate backbone. Negative charges don't like each other. They're going to repel. Your goal is to get the DNA to stick to this membrane so you don't want it repelling from the membrane. So we need to make sure that the pH is low when we're going to bind. And this is one of the purposes of like the binding buffer that you use. So typically there's like a binding buffer, there's a wash buffer, and then there's the elution buffer or you can use like water or whatever buffer that you wanted to elute in. Some of the kids also have a pH indicator to make sure that pH is really low enough. Um, so if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it is orange or purple, add sodium acetate um, to get that pH down um, to make sure that it binds. But the binding buffer is going to give it a low pH um, so that that membrane is ready to bind the DNA. But that's not all it's going to do. You also need to make the DNA like accessible for the membrane. Um, so right now your DNA is hanging out in some like salty, watery mix. It's really happy in that mix. It's soluble. Um, so when something's soluble, every little, every copy of it has a full water coat. So we want the DNA or the RNA to bind the membrane, but it's really happy hanging out with the water. So we need to make it not so happy hanging out with that water and to actually make it kind of like undissolve. So come out of the water and find that membrane and bind to that membrane instead of being floating around in this water and then just going straight through the membrane. First we need to get the like get the coat off and so how we can do this is a couple of things in the mixture. So the, one of the things in the mixture is going to be some sort of like chiotropic salt. Um, so chiotropic means it's like chaos bringing. So basically it's going to break up the water networks that are surrounding um, each of those molecules, each of your DNA molecules, um, th that like watery coat. So water is really polar. It's got these partial positive and partial negative parts. Partial positive and partial negative parts like hanging out. Unlike that negative negative, if you have opposite charges, those are going to like each other and those are going to stick. 
This is why water is really sticky. And so water is sticky to itself and it's sticky to the DNA. And so you have this water sticking to itself around your DNA. And this is going to prevent that DNA from finding the membrane. And it's going to keep it in this like soluble state where it's just happy with the water. And it's just going to go right through your column, which is not what you want because everything else is going to go right through your column too, which is what you want. Um, and so basically we need to get this water coat off and the chiotropic salts are going to help break up that water network, give the water other things to hang out with, and let the DNA be able to find the uh, membrane. And to even help it find the membrane better, we have isopropanol. Isopropanol is going to lower the dielectric constant. Dielectric sounds like a scary term, um, but really it's to kind of referring to how shielded, charged, or partially charged, so polar things are. So we have our DNA, it's currently like shielded in water. Um, so water has a high dielectric constant. It's really polar because it has the positively char partial positive charges on those hydrogens because the oxygen sucking all the electrons away. So it's negative, partially negatively charged. So those are going to help shield the DNA um, from finding the membrane. We want to lower the dielectric constant by making the solution less polar and we can do this by adding something that's less polar than water. Um, and so we add isopropanol. So isopropanol, it's got that nonpolar part. It's got that hydrocarbon part um, that's, that's nonpolar. Um, so there's like shared electrons fairly. Um, so you have that part is like not charged at all. And so the water's not gonna hang out with that. And so this lowers the amount of stuff around the DNA that's going to be hiding it from finding um, that membrane. And also it's gonna lower the shielding around the membrane itself. And now these two can help find each other, especially since you've got those chiotropic salts that are helping breaking up those water networks as well. So the DNA sticks to the membrane, but everything else is gonna flow through, well, at least mostly. So now you need to actually like wash things off better. So, but first you just need to get your DNA stuck and then we'll deal with all that other mess that's there. So you get your DNA stuff, can you wash some of the preliminary stuff off? But now you want to really wash things. And so now you have the wash buffer. Typically the wash buffer is going to have ethanol and often you have to add this ethanol separately. Um, so when you get the bottle, it'll have a little like check mark that you put once you've added the ethanol. Once you've added that ethanol, good to go. Um, and so when you do that, um, the ethanol, the purpose of the ethanol is it's going to dissolve the salts. So the DNA is now stuck to that membrane and the ethanol is going to raise the dielectric a little bit. It's less, it's less nonpolar than isopropanol. So isopropanol had like the more CH3 groups, which are like the nonpolar part. And so ethanol has a smaller nonpolar part. Um, so it's going to dissolve the, um, dissolve those salts because the salts are really little and they can dissolve easier than this big DNA that's stuck on your membrane. Um, so the ethanol is going to help dissolve those salts. And when the salts are dissolved, now they can go through that membrane um, and you don't need to worry about them, but you wash them off. But now you have the ethanol to worry about. And so typically you have a second spin after that initial spin. So the initial spin is going to get most of the stuff through, but then you need the second spin to really get all of the ethanol through because the ethanol is going to interfere with your downstream application. So basically what you want to actually do with the DNA. Um, one way you might see this show up is if you are running an agarose gel and you go to pipette your sample in and it just like floats up out of the well because ethanol is less dense. Um, and so you don't want that to happen. Um, and there's, uh, it can also interfere with actual like experiments and stuff that you want to do. So you want to get rid of that ethanol. And so that's why you do that second spin after you dump out the stuff that was in it. And, but remember, once you dump out that stuff, you need to be really careful when you're putting the column back in the tube that you're not just like banging it into that stuff that you just took out. Um, that ethanol that you just took out because now when your DNA comes out clean, it's not actually going to be clean because it's going to get contaminated by the ethanol that you had spilled on the inside of your tube. Speaking of the, the tube, next you want to stick it in a clean tube when you're actually ready to elute it. Um, and how you're going to elute it is we're going to reverse those binding conditions. So in the binding conditions, we had this high salt, we had um, this um, and low pH. Now we wanna flip the tables. We're gonna have a low salt and a higher pH. Um, and so typically we do the elution. You can do it in some sort of elution buffer, which is often like Tris EDTA. Um, EDTA is a chelator. So it's going to prevent, um, it's going to bind to metals and make sure that there's no like DNases um, that can, using the metals that can then like chew up your DNA or your RNA or whatever. 
Um, sometimes EDTA can interfere with later applications though, so you want to make sure that you don't use that if you know that you, you don't want EDTA in your solution. Um, often you, another way, thing to do is like 10 millimolar tris, or often what I do is actually elute in water. Um, once you've eluted it, now you can store that in the minus 20. If it's RNA, you probably want to store it in the minus 80, um, but this should be good for a while. Um, but that was in a new tube that you're doing the elution for. Um, you can elute in different volumes if you want more concentrated, elute in a smaller volume. If you want less concentrated, elute in a bigger volume. Um, you can also, um, some of the protocols call for you to like let it sit for a minute uh, before you elute. Um, another important thing is to add the stuff like directly to the membrane, uh, not to the side of the tube, especially if you're doing like that minute where you just like wait with it on the membrane. If it's not actually on the membrane, if your water's like on the side of the tube, that's not going to be very helpful. And finally, remember to label the top and the sides of your tubes. Um, angle the caps so that they're in and they're not going to bang into other things when they have to be open in your centrifuge. Make sure your centrifuge is balanced. Um, and yeah, I think that was the basics. So hope that helps and happy spinning.